The recombination of positive detection gas ions at the cathode may be problematic as the ions may be neutralized in an excited state or may dislodge electrons from the cathode. When in an excited state, the atom will eventually decay to the ground state by emitting a photon. Both these photons and dislodged electrons may be capable of causing reionization of the gas, triggering another avalanche so that a single detection event could lead to a continuous discharge. To prevent this, a quenching mechanism is used. The quenching may be electronic, so that the electric field is removed for a short period of time following an event to prevent further discharge, or may be inherent in the design by mixing quenching gases with the detection gas. Such quenching gases are designed to be easier to ionize than the detection gas, so that during migration to the cathode, the detection gas is neutralized by the quenching gas, which then becomes the positive ion migrating to the cathode. When the charged quenching gas ion recombines at the cathode, it does so in the ground state, so that further avalanche discharge is avoided. The most effective quenching gases are organic compounds, but these are dissociated irreversibly during the quenching, which gives the tube a limited operating lifetime. An alternative is to use a halogen gas, which is recovered in full at the cathode, so avoiding this removal of the quenching gas. The raw output from a GM tube shows a fraction of the radiation counts per second, which is modified by taking account of the dead time to give the actual counts per second. If the radiation type and energy are known, then the counts per second reading may be calibrated so that the unit gives an equivalent dose rate. This is not the best method for dose determination from an unknown source, as in the GM tube, the signal pulse height is relatively insensitive to the instant radiation energy and type, so that the energy deposited is difficult to determine. The use of counts per second or dose rate will depend to a large extent on the circumstances of use. In both modes, radiation is being detected. In the former, the activity is displayed, while in the latter, a conversion is made to indicate the energy deposition rate. For widespread contamination of an area by a radioactive material, the energy reaching the GM tube will be small, as the inverse square law of distance and transit absorption will remove all but a fraction of incident particles. However, the radiation from the contamination will be measurable as an increase in the background radiation count level, which can easily be expressed in terms of an increase in the number of counts per second. As a practical radiation detection device, a GM tube is not considered a natural choice for measuring radiation produced by a pulse device such as a LINAC. The reason is that if the dead time is longer than the pulse width duration, the detector will only pick up a single event rather than a full bunch worth of electrons or photons and the tube will count the pulses, not the radiation, leading to an underestimation of the dose. If the dead time is significantly longer than the bunch frequency, the detector will count only a fraction of the bunches, leading to a further under-reading. If the operating characteristics of the GM tube and the LINAC are known, these effects may be compensated for so that a GM tube could be used. This will mean, however, that a different detection method has been used to initially calibrate the data.